Ryan Rodney Reynolds OBC is a Canadian and American actor, producer, and businessman. He began his career starring in the Canadian teen soap opera Hillside and had minor roles before landing the lead role on the sitcom Two Guys and a Girl between 1998 and 2001. Born, October 23, 1976, age 47 years, Vancouver, Canada. Spouse, Blake Lively, M. 2012, Scarlett Johansson, M. 2008 to 2011. Height, 1.88 meters, siblings, Jeff Reynolds, Terry Reynolds, Patrick Reynolds. Upcoming movie, Animal Friends. Parents, James Chester Reynolds, Tammy Reynolds. Ryan Rodney Reynolds was born on October 23, 1976 in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, the youngest of four children. His father, James Chester Reynolds, was a food wholesaler, and his mother, Tamara Lee Tammy Stewart, worked as a retail store saleswoman. He has Irish and Scottish ancestry. Between 1991-93, Ryan appeared in 15, 1990 a Nickelodeon series taped in Florida with many other Canadian actors. After the series ended, he returned to Vancouver where he played in a series of forgettable television movies. He did small roles in Glenn Close's Serving in Silence, The Margarethi Kammermeyer Story, 1995, and CBS's Update of In Cold Blood, 1996. However, his run of luck had led him to decide to quit acting. One night, he ran into fellow Vancouver actor, a native Chris William Martin. Martin found Ryan rather despondent and told him to pack everything. They were going to head to Los Angeles, California. The two stayed in a cheap Los Angeles motel. On the first night of their stay, Reynolds' Jeep was rolled downhill and stripped. For the next four months, Ryan drove it without doors. In 1997, he landed the role of Berg in Two Guys, A Girl and a Pizza Place, 1998. Initially, the show was reviled by critics and seemed desperate for any type of rating success. However, it was renewed for a second season, but with a provision for a Machiover by former Roseanne, 1988, writer Kevin Abbott. The show became a minor success and has led to additional film roles for Ryan, most notably in the last ever MGM film, a remake of the Amityville Horror, 2005. Ryan was engaged to Canadian singer-songwriter Alanis Morissette, another Nickelodeon veteran. Between 2000 for 2006, he has been married to Blake Lively since September the 9th, 2012. They have three daughters and a son. He was previously married to Scarlett Johansson. Family, spouses, Blake Lively, September the 9th, 2012, present, for children, Scarlett Johansson, September the 27th, 2008, July the 1st, 2011, divorced, children. James Reynolds, Betty Reynolds, Inez Reynolds, Olin Reynolds, Betty Reynolds, Parents, James Chester Reynolds, Tammy Reynolds, Relatives, Jeff Reynolds, Sibling, Terry Reynolds, Sibling, Patrick Reynolds, Sibling, Balin Johnson, Niece or Nephew, Kate Johnson, Niece or Nephew, Wyatt Blake Johnson, Niece or Nephew, Bo Lively, Niece or Nephew, Luke Lively, Niece or Nephew, Jake Lively, Niece or Nephew, Trademarks, has appeared in several Superfro, Comic book adaptations, especially as Deadpool, often plays likable regular guys. Sarcastic sharp-edged wit paired with a frequent stone-faced delivery tattoo on his left wrist. Trivia. He first became a fan of Deadpool when he found a comic where Deadpool describes himself as looking like Ryan Reynolds crossed with a sharp EA. Failed his high school drama class due to non-attendance. In November 2008, he ran in the New York City Marathon on behalf of the Michael J. Fox Foundation. His father was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 1995, has a fear of flying since he once went skydiving, and his parachute failed to open at the first attempt. On April 12, 2015, he was involved in a hit-and-run incident between filming of Deadpool, 2016, in Canada. While walking through a parking garage, he was struck by the car of a paparazzo who then fled the scene. Reynolds sustained only minor injuries and later joked about the incident on Twitter. When his first daughter was born, a good friend of his, whom he described as close enough to him to be there when the baby was born, tried to sell pictures of her to a tabloid magazine. A furious Reynolds confronted the friend, confirmed the story was true, then told him that their friendship was destroyed and they would never see or speak to each other ever again. The tabloid did not use the pictures because it would have left them open to a massive invasion.
of privacy lawsuit, gained 25 pounds of muscle for his role as Hannibal King in Blade, Trinity, 2004. He did not enjoy working on Green Lantern, 2011. He admits to having a poor working relationship with director Martin Campbell. He has also said that the film's critical and financial failure was a huge relief because he didn't want to play Hal Jordan again. Is the youngest of four brothers? Two of his brothers are policemen. His paternal grandfather, Chester Chess Reynolds, was a Canadian politician and member of the Social Credit Party of Alberta. Chester was an ML in Alberta from 1940 to 1944. Has expressed great interest in portraying the DC Comics character The Flash if Warner Bros. should ever decide to do a film adaptation of the comic book. On Halloween 2015, he went trick-or-treating with children as the character Deadpool, promoting his role as the title character in Deadpool, 2016. One of the few actors to star in films based on comic books, from both the Marvel Comics, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, 2009, and the Deadpool, 2016, and DC Comics, Green Lantern, 2011, catalogs. Married fiancé Scarlett Johansson in a private Canadian ceremony, on September 27, 2008, turned down the role of Xander Harris on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 1997, which went to Nicholas Brindon, reportedly for his own unpleasant high school experiences. Star Sarah Michelle Gellar refused to believe this when she was told during a Buffy trivia quiz promoted by Shecknose.com. In 2002, he badly injured his back jumping from a bridge in Zurich, Switzerland. In early 2001, he met actress Raquel Lee Cook, and the two immediately hit it off. However, Raquel had to fly to Britain shortly after to film Blow Dry, 2001. Ryan ended up surprising her, pulling out of his filming schedule and following her all the way to London. It was a success and they ended up dating for a year. Became engaged to his girlfriend of two years, Canadian singer Alanis Morissette in June 2004. In June 2006 they announced that their engagement was off. He was awarded a star on Canada's Walk of Fame in Toronto, Ontario in 2014. Can do a standing back flip? Was named the sexiest man alive by People magazine in 2010 during the same time that his wife Scarlett Johansson was named as Babe of the Year by GQ magazine. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6801 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California on December 15, 2016. He was traveling in Indonesia with his former fiancé, Alanis Morissette, when the tsunami struck. They were uninjured since they were staying on the opposite end of the island from where the tsunami hit. While T-Mobile recently purchased Mint Mobile, Ryan still maintains creative control over the company's advertising agency with his reported 25% stake in the company. Merited a place in Time Magazine's The 100 Most Influential People issue with an homage written by Helen Mirren. On May 12, 2018 Reynolds attended a FUB at LL Bundesliga match between Hertha BSC and RB Leipzig while promoting Deadpool 2, 2018, in Berlin, Germany. Talking to sports journalist Jens Weston of Sky Germany before the game, Reynolds revealed that he was an avid soccer player from age 6 to 16. He said while he played with much ambition, he had to realize early on that he would never be good enough to pursue a career as a professional athlete. Co-owns, with fellow actor Rob McElhenney, the Welsh football team Wrexham, which they bought in 2020. Ryan Reynolds played Seth in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, 1996, where he made mention of the show in the movie Deadpool 2, 2018. Producer and author Mike Sims is a big fan of the Deadpool movies and works with a writer of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, 1996, Barney Cohen on the TV pitch The Lazarus Game. Quotes, on kissing the older woman, in Van Wilder, 2002, on that note, that being said, it was damn hard kissing her. You've never experienced anything until you've had a mature, darting tongue in your mouth. Acting has given me a way to channel my angst. I feel like an overweight. Pimply faced kid a lot of the time, and finding a way to access that insecurity and put it towards something creative is incredibly rewarding. I feel very lucky. On his relationship with Alanis Morissette, our relationship couldn't be better. There's no truth to the rumors we would temporarily broken up. I never took acting classes, but I knew I could do it based on the skill with which I lied to my parents on a regular basis. I'm not a hockey fan, which is probably why I had to leave Canada in the first place, on getting into acting. I started when I was 13 years old. I did a really horrible soap opera called 15 for Nickelodeon that Stone College kids kept on the air for three years. And then the first movie I did was in SRI Lenka, when I was 14. I spent three months there. 
I was there without my parents working on a movie in a country that was in the midst of a civil war. It was pretty wild. I did two trips in 2006. I did one through New Zealand on a motorcycle, and I tried to cross Australia on a motorcycle from one end of the continent to the other. My friend and I did not make it, unfortunately, he crashed, and we had to find a hospital. On if he gets recognized while traveling, I get noticed depending on where I am. I have no problem wandering all around Spain. But the Germans, wow. The Germans, they are like, oh. Van Wilder's a party animal, 2007. I used to backpack when I was younger. I think I can actually say that I can't do the hostile thing anymore. I'm a little too spoiled. I have a discipline that has served me very well in my career and in my personal life and that's gotten stronger as I've gotten older. I've always felt if I don't just have a natural knack for it, I will just out-discipline the competition if I have to work harder than anybody else. 2010, on Van Wilder, 2002, it made me the party guy. I would walk into a bar and people would start lining up the shots. You could sum up my career at that point as a free shot at a bar. I know it affected me more than I'm revealing, because I know that I went years without even saying the words, Van Wilder. Even now, when I say it, it's a bit of a big moment, for me. On Filming Buried, 2010, I'll never, ever in my life complain on a set again after being on that set. 16, 17 days of doing that. It was such a state of emotional distress, on the 9th, 2007, that was such a wake-up call for me. The movie was made on less than a million dollars. I loved the process. I loved the character I was given to play. I learned a lot about filmmaking from John August, who was directing. That was the birth of my own ambition. There were particular films after that that I went after. I had a new view. On Buried, 2010, it's one of those rare movies that you experience more than you watch it. The selling point to me was that script had both a narrative challenge and a technical challenge. It's rare to find a script that has both. People like Hitchcock, that's all he looked for. Films like Rope, 1948, and Lifeboat, 1944, and Rear Window, 1954. That was what they were all about. I had a lot of confidence in Rodrigo, though. He sent me a comprehensive. 15-page treatise on why he wanted to make the film. That hooked me. It's not the most glamorous role. You get in the box and as an actor you have to do these things that are embarrassing, frightening and raw. It was an adventure. On the effect the title of, Sexiest Man Alive, would have on his wife, Scarlett Johansson. Now it's going to be, Sexiest Man, Take Out the Garbage. That does sound better. I'm always terrified at the beginning. Then I start working and get past my fear, which is the real win for me. Just like Hal. Jordan and Green Lantern, 2011, I'm used to stepping forward in the face of whatever fears I've created for myself. The stunts on the ground I can do, but I've never been good with heights. When I was a little kid, maybe 9 or 10, I was a complete asshole. I would run around the neighborhood on Halloween throwing firecrackers in people's mailboxes, at their houses, and things like that. We were just these little hell raisers. I'm sure I have a lot to atone for, if there is a judgment day. It's gonna be a long list for me. It goes right up until I was about 18 and then I sort of straightened out. For every character I play, there's 10 others I've read, that went to another actor because he's better qualified for the role, or for whatever reason. Who knows, it's always a very mercurial process. As an actor, you're always kind of cognizant, that you'll never work again. You always have this lizard brain fear, always, just under the surface, that this is it. Because you see it, I've been fortunate enough to have a 23-year career so far. I've watched people come and go, and vanish. I've watched really talented people never get that invaluable foothold into the industry. So you're always walking that tightrope of being very grateful that you're in this position. I used to say to Blake, I would take a bullet for you. I could never love anything as much as I love you. I would say that to my wife. And the second I looked in that baby's eyes, I knew in that exact moment that if we were ever under attack, I would use my wife as a human shield to protect that baby, having lost interest in The Flash, the comic book adaptation to which his name was once attached. I have no desire to wear a red leotard for three pictures over ten years. 2007, lighting what he calls a horrible little cigarette, while grimacing with self-contempt, I had quit, but then I had to smoke in my last two movies, on his, no thigh self, to two that he got in 1998. It was about disappointing my parents. Observation, 2019. Some of the stuff I've done in the past that you would characterize as maybe didn't work, were moments where I was stepping into the archetypal leading man role. It's just not something I've ever been really that great at, to be totally blunt. But I have immense respect for those who are great at it. I also think that our idea of a traditional leading man, 
archetypal male is changing wildly day to day, over the last five years in particular, and I think that's great. I think that's evolution, to put in in Pikachu terms. I'm terrified that I'm genetically predisposed to only having boys. That's frightening. By the time I was 10 years old, and I'm not exaggerating, I knew how to patch drywall. I think every relationship is going to go through a few rough patches. Those are what make it stronger, I think. Salaries. Spirited, 2022, $20 million. The Atom Project, 2022, $15 million. Red Notice, 2021, $20 million. Six Underground, 2019, $27 million. Deadpool 2, 2018, $20 million plus percent of box office. Deadpool, 2016, $2 million plus box office bonuses.